Hello, my name is Dave Obronta. It's a pleasure to have the opportunity to participate in this Emory University and Carter Center event. In the next 20 minutes, I'm going to introduce the concept of genetic biocontrol, describe briefly how genetics is currently used to control insects, including mosquitoes in some settings. I'll introduce you to the concept of gene drive and how it differs from current genetic biocontrol technologies and potentially make gene drive based technologies well suited as a tool to combat human malaria in challenging settings where current interventions are unlikely to get us to the end goal of malaria elimination. And I want to leave you with an understanding of how close we are to seeing a gene drive mosquito product that is ready for field testing. We've heard an update on the global malaria situation. And looking back, there certainly has been a lot of enormous progress. But looking forward, there's a general consensus that new innovations are needed to meet global targets for malaria elimination. Mosquito control has played a dominant role in getting us to where we are today. This graph shows the results of an interesting analysis that looked at the estimated contributions of three classes of malaria interventions to the gains in malaria control in Africa over a 15-year period. This bottom line shows the actual observed reduction in parasite prevalence over time among children and how it's gone down markedly over the time period analyzed. The black line is the counterfactual. It's the estimated parasite prevalence there would have been if these interventions were not applied. The colored zones are the estimated contributions to prevalence reductions of each of these interventions. The two classes of interventions targeting the mosquito have had the largest impact and contributed the most to reducing malaria prevalence among children in Africa. Although great success has been achieved, new mosquito control technologies and approaches will be important for continued success. While chemical insecticides have and will continue to be an essential tool for managing mosquito populations and protecting people from malaria, there are major challenges in managing the evolution of insecticide resistance within target mosquito species. Insecticide resistance threatens these pillars of malaria control. Genetics and genetic biocontrol offer effective, species-specific, chemical-free options in some situations. And gene drive technologies are new genetic approaches that might be an additional option in the near future, and one well-suited in some ways for applications over large geographic areas and challenging settings. So what is genetic biocontrol? Genetic biocontrol is somewhat analogous to fighting fire with fire, in that the agents of control of the target species are actually individuals of the same species but with a somewhat different genotype. Before we consider the genetic technology referred to as gene drive, let's take a brief look at the original use of genetics to control, reduce, and eliminate insect pest populations that was invented and first used in the middle of the 20th century, some 70 years ago. This technology is called the sterile insect technique, SIT. SIT does not involve gene drive and is being used with increasing frequency to control mosquitoes in various locations around the world. This is a good starting point for thinking about and understanding gene drive. The sterile insect technique relies on the large-scale production and release of sterilized males of the targeted pest species, a species of mosquitoes, for example. When these sterile males find and mate with females of the same species in the pest population in nature, those matings are unproductive. The female will not produce any viable offspring. If a large enough number of sterile males are released with sufficient regularity, a reduction in the size of the population in the next generations can be achieved because fewer offspring are produced from generation to generation. The males can be sterilized using appropriate doses of x-rays, or genetic engineering can be used to create genetically modified insects that carry transgenes that have a similar 
sterilizing effect. This approach is widely used to control a wide variety of insects and can be very effective. It's highly species specific because it's based on the natural mating preferences of the organism. And this is a characteristic of genetic biocontrol technologies in general. To give you an idea of where these non-gene drive technologies are being tested and used against mosquitoes, let's look at this map that was published last year, where the authors inventoried mosquito SIT and SIT-like approaches, and I've added some data as well. I'll note that all these examples, with two exceptions in Africa, are efforts to control dengue virus transmitting mosquitoes and not malaria transmitting mosquitoes. A notable feature of this genetic control strategy is that it requires the regular periodic releases of appropriate numbers of sterile males. These programs are effective as long as the production and release of sterile males is sustained. But what if one could introduce a gene that would cause the kind of population suppression effects seen with SIT, but without requiring the regular periodic releases of those sterilizing insects. What if that gene of interest once introduced into the target population of insects would rapidly spread on its own through matings and over time result either in the same reduction or elimination of the targeted pest insect population as with SIT, or result in a population of insects with a slightly different genetic makeup. In the case of malaria transmitting mosquitoes, the genetic change might result in a loss in the insect's capacity to transmit malaria parasites. Gene drive and gene drive technologies have the potential to do just that. Let's take a look at gene drive. Gene drive refers to a genetic process that results in a pattern of inheritance resembling what I am showing you here. Let's back up for a second and bring to mind what you and I know about basic patterns of inheritance in animals, plants, and insects. The genomes of most animals and plants and insects contain two copies of every gene. One will reside on a chromosome inherited from the female parent, and one will reside on the chromosome inherited from the male parent. When this organism reproduces, it will pass one of those copies on to each of its offspring. Each copy of the gene has an equal chance in ending up in an offspring. We understand this. If you were asked, what's the chance of this pregnant woman having a baby boy? Or what's the chance of her having a baby girl? You would say, it would be 50% chance of having a baby boy and a 50% chance of having a baby girl. However, some forms of genes are preferentially transmitted to the next generation. And when this occurs, that form of gene is said to drive. It's said to drive because such a gene, when it arises in a population or is introduced into a population, can, under some conditions, quickly increase in prevalence in that population and quickly spread through or drive through that population. There are many components found within all genomes that have or have had these drive characteristics. They can be single genes. They can be small groups of genes, even whole chromosomes. Gene drive systems are common in nature. Mosquito biologists recognize the potential of these drive systems to serve as tools for controlling mosquito populations more than 60 years ago. But they didn't have the capabilities at the time to either use those drive systems or to recreate them in the laboratory. In the last decade in particular, advances in molecular genetics and the emergence of powerful gene editing systems, among other things, have enabled researchers to create assemblies of genes in the lab, which when introduced into the genome of a malaria transmitting mosquito, exhibit very strong drive. That is, those genetic assemblies are preferentially transmitted to the next generation and spread rapidly through laboratory populations. The technical details don't really concern us here today, but I want you to understand that the engineered gene drive systems created in the laboratory for use in Anopheles gambi, for example, are in a fairly mature state of technical development. 
Engineered gene drives are small assemblies of genes that drive or spread. One can attach other genes to these drive systems intended to have some effect on the insect. Those attached genes can also be driven and spread along with the gene drive. What genes are developers attaching to their gene drives and for what purpose? I'd like to tell you about two ways engineered gene drives are being developed in Anopheles gambi with the intention of reducing malaria transmission. First, genes that reduce the fertility of female Anopheles gambi or genes that alter the ratio of males to females are being attached to gene drives. When these systems are introduced into populations of Anopheles gambi in the laboratory, the populations over the course of 10 generations or so are severely reduced or even eliminated. This is referred to as population suppression gene drives. Alternatively, genes that change the mosquito's physiology such that they are no longer able to transmit malaria parasites are also being attached to gene drive systems. The malaria parasite enters the mosquito with the blood of an infected person and undergoes a series of transformations that enable the parasite to interact with and penetrate various mosquito tissues. Eventually, the parasites find and invade the salivary glands of the mosquito, where they will be transmitted to another person when the mosquito bites next. There are numerous genes being considered which, when expressed in mosquitoes, can interfere with parasite development and prevent parasite transmission. When these systems are introduced into populations of Anopheles gambi in the laboratory, the populations over the course of 10 generations or so are modified such that all the mosquitoes contain the gene drive and the genes that result in the mosquitoes with very few parasites. This approach is called the population modification gene drive. So what is the current state of affairs with gene drive? There are no gene drive products of any kind currently being tested outside of the laboratory. There are a number of research groups working in this space, but two research and development groups working on gene drive for malaria control and elimination are particularly far, fairly far along in their development efforts. One group is based at the University of California in Irvine, the UCI Malaria Initiative. This group is working on gene drive systems for population modification. They are still developing their product and conducting lab-based tests. They are working with collaborators in San Tome and Principe, where they are conducting baseline studies of the mosquitoes and the parasites, and working with their partners there to strengthen capacity in vector biology and in the relevant ministries and communities. The second group, Target Malaria, is based at Imperial College, London, and they're working on drive systems for suppressing populations of Anopheles gambi. They have developed prototypes and tested them under contained laboratory conditions. And there are Target Malaria teams in three African nations who have been collecting baseline data on Anopheles gambi, developed infrastructure that could support contained rearing of mosquitoes with gene drive systems, and in Burkina Faso, the team in 2019 released sterile transgenic mosquitoes, which did not contain gene drive, but which were part of a phase testing program, which Target Malaria is following. That was the first release of a transgenic insect in Africa. Target Malaria is a fairly large team who is actively conducting community engagement and regulatory capacity strengthening activities in Burkina Faso, Mali, and Uganda. While it's uncertain at the moment exactly when these developers will be in a position to conduct their first open field trials and what those field trials will look like and where they will occur, they appear to be a few years away. Let me bring to mind a few other areas of activity in this research and development space that go beyond the technical aspects of these development efforts. Gene drive containing mosquitoes are genetically modified and their testing and use will require regulatory frameworks and expertise. Where that doesn't exist, there are efforts to build that capacity. 
The African Union Development Agency, NEPAD, is actively working to develop useful guidelines for member states and to strengthen biosafety and regulatory capacity in anticipation of testing and evaluation of gene drive technologies for malaria control on the African continent. It's worth noting that the African Union has formally recognized gene drive technologies as having unique potential to help improve public health in Africa. The gene drive systems I described are being designed to spread through populations of Anopheles gambi. Applications and technologies such as this, where actions in one location can directly affect distant locations, even across borders and between countries, creates governance and decision-making challenges that raises ethical questions. These questions are being actively explored by sociologists, political scientists, and ethicists. Finally, gene drive technologies have the potential to persist in environments. And this has elicited questions concerning the long-term impacts on those environments and the biodiversity in them. These concerns are regular topics of discussion at international fora, such as the Convention for Biological Diversity, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, and even the European Parliament. Let me wrap this up with a brief summary. Genetic engineering is being used to assemble and introduce lab-built gene drive systems into malaria-transmitting mosquitoes, and these systems have the potential to be durable, sustainable, cost-effective, and capable of being integrated into existing malaria intervention strategies. Technology developers are well on their way to having gene drive Anopheles Gambi products that can be used to suppress or modify wild populations of these insects and reduce malaria transmission. No gene drive products have been tested outside the laboratory as yet although developers are likely to be in a position to do so within a few years. Thank you so much for your your attention, and let me hand things back to the moderators.